Well, the countdown is clearly on for IRT New Zealand Trotting Cup Day, joined by the Racing Industry Manager, Darren Williams. Gee, we're winding back the clock here. What was your last Cup Day as it involved, boys? I suppose it was about 25 years ago. Yeah, 26, Greg. Yeah, it's a long time ago, so back to where it started. And uh, hey, look, we're looking for a party on Cup Day, and IRT New Zealand Trotting Cup Day is uh, just about upon us, and uh, yeah, we're really looking for a big day. Magnificent at Ashburton on Monday for so many reasons, but in terms of the build up to the big race, having copied that, a northerner, Ray Green with his first starter in the cup, um, and a dominant performance from him has really spiced things up. Absolutely, he's raced here at Addington Raceway really well before. He's an exceptional horse, and uh, it's just mixed it up. I think right back to the Methvin Cup when Spankham um, beat Self Assured. A copy of that coming in, plus the others that have grabbed themselves a ticket, Tango Tara, who's had a, a little bit of a, an issue that they've, they've got to the bottom of, um, and a number of other horses, the, the Pride of South and uh, Robin's Playboy. Uh, it's really mixed it up and it's a, a really good field, we're excited. We head to Kaikoura on Monday, where Classy Brigade was a winner of that race last year, and of course went on, was unlucky in the cup, so we get to see the likes of him there, and the age pace is a decent race there, and all of those horses will be turning up on cup day too, uh, and the trot has Sunday Sun, who's the dominant favourite for the Majestic Sun Dominion, so these horses form-wise, people are getting to see everything over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, some exciting things in the Kaikoura Cup, of course, wild excuse. Uh, loves the front run, loves free running and uh, trying to grab its place in the cup. Uh, very impressive in the Mears race at Ashburton. Uh, Habib De Inter, who was scratched at Ashburton and won the race at Kaikoura last year and of course went on to win the Dominion. Um, so Paul nan has got a great record up there and, uh, and, and trainer trotters as we know. Plus these young horses that are going to make their way to uh, the side stakes final on cup day. And of course we've also got the Neverly R final cup day. So. Another group one just add to what is already a massive day. All right, big day here, cup trials next Wednesday, six o'clock for cup trial, and we work our way back depending on how many trials there are there. Another important step uh, towards the cup. We've got the cup preview with the box seat stable of sponsors on Monday night, 9 p.m. Again, that's a must watch. Absolutely, the cup preview is one of those important things. Uh, yourself, Mick, uh, looking after that, and uh, it's great to have the box seat back, back on here. It's something that people need to be watching. Uh, get that either on um, HRNZ. You on can get HRNZ. It yep, it'll be up there as quick as we can get it up there, and uh, that'll preview all the all the feature races. Obviously, the Cup trials, Greg. I mean, for years, even when I was a youngster, coming out and watching the Cup trials, you'd find that horse that just went to the line fifth or sixth hard held in those intermediate races, and think, hey, that's a bit for me Cup day, and, and that's the place to be. Welcome everyone to come and have a look on, on the day at uh, the Cup trials. Spectators will be open, grab yourself something to eat and enjoy the night. Ticket sales, that's a bit of an issue now because the sold out sign's up. Yeah, so that doesn't happen too often. Uh, of course it has happened at Rickon in a couple of times where they have uh, slightly less than we normally have on Cup Day. We have reduced the crowd a wee bit, so being upfront about that, we've made sure that we are being responsible in, in the situation we're in with COVID at the moment, making sure that not only are we able to deal with the people safely on course, but they feel safe and there's a wee bit of space between them. Uh, we want to do the right thing there. And of course, the reality is um, no one wants to go into a, a COVID restriction level, level two or three or anything like that. And we do have to look at the cost structure of, of what we would do there and how would we accommodate those people and, and what would happen if we put all that structure in place and then went into that level, something that we couldn't get out of. So it's trying to balance all of that and making sure that people are comfortable, but it's still going to be a big crowd here. Darren, COVID level two. We don't want to talk about it, but we have to. No, it's something we don't want to talk about. Greg, we're in level one, we're looking for a big day. Uh, what do the COVID levels mean? So level three, if we were unfortunate to be moved to a level three, uh, we'd be racing behind doors with no public here at all. Uh, no owners here at all. Uh, but we would be racing. We would be racing. Guaranteed we're, to be racing. There was absolutely yep. no chance that we would be racing. Yep. We're, we're definitely running the, running the day and all the future races and the owners will be earning the stuff more Yep. Um, level two is where it gets tricky. So, level two, uh, the order and direction that HRNZ have do allow some owners to be there, and I did the work on that when I was at HRNZ to yep. try and incorporate those into what is a normal race meeting. Of course, Cup Day is a normal race no. meeting, and the strike rate of owners attending is much, much higher. Yep. Uh, it would be remiss of the club, whilst even we're in level one, not to have a plan, and we've been working on that for a wee while. 
Um, so this week the, the owner database that, uh, that Eddington Raceway have here, will, that will be, uh, the email will be sent out to everyone that will explain exactly how that will work. It's not an email that you respond to. Uh, there will be a further follow up that we will get a response to. So we're looking to pre-register those people that would wish to come as an owner under level two. Yep. So the club are looking to have 900 people in total under level two on course and we're making a commitment that 600 of those people would be owners. Um, the difference under this level two and trying to make sure that we can handle 600 people because we have to do it in pods of 100 based on the government's regulations around hospitality and events. Yep. So the hundreds, the groups of 100, the six groups of 100 would need to stay separate from each other. Now we're very confident that we can do that, but it will mean that there's some further restrictions in place. The owners won't be able to go and see their horses if we were in level two. Now no one wants to do that, but it's more important to have as many owners here as we can. Those pods need to remain completely separate. So we will be requiring them to pre-register. We will be taking a, a fee of $50 a head off each owner that is coming, each individual owner, which is a way of ensuring that we're able to cater to them. So we'll be um, delivering a three course meal directly to their table. Yep. So they can't get up and move around and obviously drink orders and everything else will be taken directly to their table as we're required to do with that hospitality. Um, it's unlikely that photos would be taken with horses on the day simply because the people could be coming from different rooms and we need to keep them separate. Um, and they won't be able to go and see their horses. No, they won't. And that, you know, we, we understand how disappointing that'll be for people. And look, we hope we don't have to invoke this. And it doesn't look like we do at the moment. But as I say, we've still got a plan. We've got to have a plan, Greg. Um, we've, got to, we've got to have something in place that we can we can put in place quickly. There's not going to be a lot of time if it happens. And of course, you never know when it, when it might happen. Well, we've seen it happen 24, 48 hours later. We're in complete lockdown. So again, you, you've got to plan for this. Yeah, exactly. And it's just working through that with the people. Um, as I say, we'll send out an EDM this week that'll explain how all this will work. And then we'll be in touch with uh, all of the owners that have horses in on Cup Day. Uh, again, with a pre-registration um, response that they will come back to us if they'd like to attend. Uh, it is for the owners only, so it's uh, a registered owner of a share and a horse. So it's not an owner and partner, it's owner only. Yeah, it's just owner only if we were in level two, so that we can have the maximum number of owners here. Um, syndicates under that scenario would be li limited to just the syndicate manager from a practicality point of view. Those yep. large syndicates, we can't we can't accommodate no. the size of that. Um, and as I say, it's a backup plan, uh, club being responsive to have one, and uh, let's hope we don't have to ever invoke it. Yep, I totally concur with that. In terms of information for the punters, the hub has to be the HRNZ website. All of the information, including a full betting guide, will be available there. Yeah, it will be. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on the, the Eddington Facebook page, of course, and a lot of that stuff will be carried there as well. The HRNZ are also putting forward a, a digital race book, which will have a breakout of all of the races, all of the colours, uh, all of the form you'll need, plus a number of stories, selection boxes, uh, and that'll go on the HRNZ site on the Friday before Cup. So anyone that's looking for a full form guide, either to print it themselves or just look at it digitally, that's one of the options. Of course, on the fields page, there's also a variety of options of printing race books, as there are on tob.co.nz. Uh, so everything you need is, is available there. Yeah, look, it's going to be a massive day. Are you excited? Why wouldn't you be? Oh, of course. I yeah. mean, this is this is outstanding. And then to add a race like the Nivelli Art Phillies, another group one to the day, is really exciting. I think both those features, um, the Majestic Sun uh, Dominion. Dominion and the IRT New Zealand Trotting Cup, both have levelled out, um, whilst we still have a couple of favourites in them, they've levelled out a wee bit and you can just see a couple of horses uh, further down the list that you think, well you know, that horse isn't out of it. And uh, you know, by the end of the day we could be could be cheering a, a fifth or sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth favourite home and you wouldn't be necessarily surprised. It's not always just about the winners either and, and I think of the cup this year and a guy like Ray Green whose history in the game goes all the way back to Cardigan Bay who he drove um, prior to him winning the 1963 Cup here, his first starter in the race had aged, I think he's 73 or 74, and then you've got Regan Todd with a former Cup winner, the Fixer, being his first ever runner in the Cup as well. So, great stories. Another one, Jim Curtin with Tango Tari. He's driven two Cup winners and now he's got a horse that he trains in the Cup. So there's always a storyline. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy Curtin's is a, a 
incredible storyline of course drove uh, BBC to win the cup and uh, Sarah to love to win his first cup and then his own horse uh, Franco Emirate uh, unfortunately didn't play, take his place in the cup when uh, when Jimmy was hoping that he would so it's his first starter and uh, will cap, on his, cap off his career as a trainer yeah. even though he's a very successful driver so um, extremely excited for, for Ray um, as you say for Regan and anyone that has an experience with even just having a drive on cup day for the yeah. first time uh, but even right down in all of the grades uh, Greg those trotting races we know they can turn up uh, roughies they have in the past. Sundogs Fly won at 90 to 1 a couple of years ago. And Richmond Sun last year for Brad Williamson, of course, uh, caused a massive boil over. We had Darren Keys with a couple of roughies last year. So uh, it's not always about the favourites, it's about trying to find yourself a winner. It's about enjoying the day, which is what we want everyone to do stay safe. Um, COVID trace yourself into the course. Uh, those uh, QR codes will be all over the course for everyone to do that. And it's about us running an event. Uh, in the most responsible manner that we can and everyone in Christchurch having a party. That's yep. what we want to do. Yeah, we're certainly looking forward to that. Next week we'll have the final update with the boss. Yes, CEO of Addington Raceway, Brian Thompson, will join us. Thanks so much for your time, Darren. Cheers, mate.